Hi guys, welcome back to stream number eight, episode number 22 of my Talos Principle 2 Let's Play. Hope everybody is well. Um, so on the back of the last stream, we completed the first of the southern um, areas on the island. So um, today we're going to be jumping into the second area, which I think LB made a comment at the end of the last stream that um, we really enjoyed this area. So... I'm uh, quite excited to see what we see and what we find. But without further ado, let's cut the waffle and let's jump in. Good job, we'd already heard that audio, isn't it? Bananas. All right, um, do I like text adventures? Um, I don't mind them. I don't mind them. Okay, so... We have a Prometheus shard thing there to find for the... one of the stars here. Is puzzle number four. It's like the magnetism is finding its way into the puzzles. Looking at that. Akut. Listening to Miranda talk about beauty made me think. Okay, this might be super weird and kind of pretentious, but I, I honestly mean it. What is beauty? Like, where does it exist? Is it just in our minds, or is there some objective component, something quantifiable? I always thought it was just perception, but if I understand her correctly, Miranda sees beauty as a property of the universe itself. Interesting. So the more humans there are, the more we spread across the world, the more beauty there is. Mm. But then, doesn't yeah, it follow right that it's our duty as a species to grow? To make the universe more beautiful? I mean, I feel like I've locked myself into the top answer now because I can't really go back and say yes, but not grow. Um, That's, that's a really powerful image. Beauty flowering in the universe as intelligence spreads. Thank you. I hope you're right. I think that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. I hope it's true. Okay, this may sound like a robot joke, but I love heavy metal, especially the more melodic kind. It's big, it's epic, it's full of emotion. You can really get lost in it. Actually, I named Bruce after Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer of Iron Maiden. They used to call him the Air Raid Siren, which is also what my Bruce sounds like. That sounds like an Air Raid Siren. Interesting. Um, I can't remember. I, I may have misremembered that then, LB, if they have previously said that it's not magnetism. Can't quite cast my mind back to that, so apologies if I'm misremembering. Come on, out with it. What's the problem? I know you're very busy, but you need to pay more attention to what's happening. Everything's slowing down. People are losing track of the bigger picture. They're still traumatized by New Alexandria. It's more than that. When I organized the last expedition, 
I had real trouble finding volunteers. There's no enthusiasm for the outside world anymore. They want to look away from history, pretend there's no past and no future. I'm really worried, Athena. Okay. I promise I'll look into it as soon as I'm done with this. Mountaineer. Wow, they're even using... That's pretty neat. They're very trippy. Oh, wow. Okay. So we can actually move this around. That's interesting. Very interesting. And it only works on the magnetic surfaces as well, which is also interesting. Portable excursion funnel. Who'd have thunk it? the like the funnel is drawn towards the magnetic surface not away from it so it's uh, it's an orange funnel I guarantee that's not the last time if I'm, the language I'm gonna call it a magnetic is a surface. kind of melody maybe that's why we respond to music the way we do because we recognize something that can't be expressed in any other way and when we play music we participate in something ancient, in an in an act of creation. Okay. Uh, what do you think? What kind of role is with Alexandrian in the sequel? Many people try to as her notions, either indirectly or directly. Look, I've seen not to refer her things. I don't even know the answer to my own question. I try to ponder it. Um, I mean, the way I kind of see it is that they are. I, I feel like she's seen as some sort of deity. Whereby, um, you know, she was the one that created or set everything up to, to create this civilization. So, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to still hear bits of information and like the audio logs of like the people who were around her um i'm not really sure other than that how else i can answer at the moment larger organisms from the northwestern plains are already moving into the rivers i've seen frogs and damp dragonflies the last generation of plants has really taken root no pun intended and is slowly transformed in the desert and yesterday a bunch of seagulls showed up with some much with some more work we could apply this anywhere including mars or mercury or somewhere much further away we could transform a lifeless rock into a place teeming with life we could make millions of dead worlds come alive so what wait are they that's an interesting that's an interesting kind of like thing to read so whatever they're doing they're trying to either create or attract natural life, it seems. Interesting. Human beings are deeply and inherently irrational, the claim goes, and on some level it's hard to disagree. The most human behaviours are irrational and in a sense unnecessary. As animals, we don't need to write poetry, pray or observe the stars, but to view human history as largely, largely irrational is to get it backwards. The problem with human history something the pragmatic everyday realities of mere survival to the cold logic of global real politic real politic politic yeah real real politic is that in it is in fact ruthlessly rational 
something far too little space for irrational things like kindness or inspiration. Those who imagine that they that a return to a more rural tradition form traditional form of living would be a romantic turning away from a tyranny tyranny of reason. Sorry, I need to get my reading down. Sorry, it's a bit all over the place. Uh, those who imagine that a return to a more rural, traditional form of living would be a romantic turning away from the tyranny of reason forget that there is no one more brutally rational than the farmer. And that sentence doesn't make sense to me. For the uh, it is the city that allows us the romance of the countryside. It is technology that allows us to appreciate nature. The purpose of reason ultimately is to build frameworks within which we can be irrational. Is it really? Purpose of reason is to build framework so we can be irrational. Mm. I'm not so sure. After we talked about science fiction, Alex gave me a book. Her favorite book, a novel called Athena. It's not exactly what I'm used to reading, but it's pretty good. And it really made me wonder how we're going to be perceived if this project works out. Are we going to be mythologized? Is Alexandra going to be this distant mythical figure instead of the real funny human person that she is? It's hard to imagine that we'll all have been dead for hundreds of years. <coughs> Man, I'm scared. I'm really scared. Hey, I don't want to die. Whoever's coughing like me, maybe I've got whatever they got. Interesting that uh, Papyrus just asked that question about how I perceive Alexander Brennan, and she kind of kind of says like the same sorts of things that I was thinking. I guess this isn't activated. Ah. I was just exploring LB, don't worry. Oh I can jump on the inside. Okay. say I just wasn't looking at the right place. There we go. Hasty. I just need to walk all the way to the end first. Janky. Oh, just a spark. 
disappointed. I guess we get some nice views, at least. I feel like I've been probably not doing a great job of finding all like those the audio logs. the uh, from that side I assume it's got to come from over there interesting very interesting to. I'm assuming this is one of the lost puzzles. Yes. Okay. So I might um, I might also boom 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 that push isn't here so I can speak my English tonight without being um Hold on. There will be some way. So there's, there's some way then to get on the rocks. Like a hidden passage somewhere. Question block. Cross, not notice. Also, did I inadvertently send that across there?
Um, so I have questions. I feel like I need a restart here. Unless I'm missing something obvious. Which I probably am. I'm not trapped. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, so... I wasn't watching the stream, but well done, 1K. Probably. Wasn't watching the stream, but well done, probably. This technology can ultimately reverse gravity. We've seen multiple cases of anti gravity on the island. The potential industrial structural applications of the technology are staggering. So many of the challenges we face when trying to build involve gravity, moving things, lifting things, keeping things steady. One could say that a significant part of human history has just been a long struggle with gravity. With anti gravity, all of these processes would be simpler and safer. A victory for humankind, as Byron would undoubtedly say. Um, I don't know, I didn't get like a great satisfaction with that puzzle. Kind of just feel like the puzzle was like understand how to get the cube in the funnel. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Hello, fan. Hello, other fan. All the fans are out to see Knock tonight. All right. Let's get back to solving main. Um, I think we need to like be on that ledge somehow. So I'll keep an eye out as we're going around to see whether or not I come across any ways to get on top of the um, ridges there. Spider web.
but it might have been something hidden behind there. I feel like, in effect, all I need to do is get this connector up to there, right? And I've just seen how I do it. Maybe it's my graphics settings, but I was, like, really quite shaded in the shadows, so... down. Battery issues. Sorry to be a grunt, but there's going... But what's going on with our battery tech? I had a battery replaced just a couple of years ago and it's already constantly in need of recharging. I can't spend half my life in sleep mode. Is this really what we're coming to? This is exactly what we're coming to. Battery ingredients are rare. We can't scavenge further without building outposts. Herman shut down the mine project. What did everyone expect? You should learn to live with less. Sleep mood is a great time to meditate and think about our place in the universe. Do you really need to be active all the time? Let's not start a panic about a minor technical issue. Mistakes happen. Stolo, please talk to Pellegrino or Neith about getting a replacement, which I'm sure will work a lot better. Man, it's almost like mobile phones and their batteries. What's the world coming to? You broke that one, LB? Rude. <laughs> All right, a wood migration. Oh, you got it out of the jail. Whoopsie. I have an idea of how you might have done it, but. Should have a yeah. Do for what's the thing in the jiggy somewhere. Interesting that it says we need to use two connectors, or we've got two connectors for this at least. Because my initial thoughts were almost doing the same as what we just did in the previous puzzle. I guess we can't see it from there, so... see it from there. So... Let me do... Where does this line up? Okay, so that lines up like that. So... It would... Oh, that stays. No. Actually, it's not a big deal because we can just go up there and pick it up ourselves. Okay. So, we need to actually send this one over to the side of the exit, I think. Yeah. 
see an, an inherent problem inherent problem with what I've just done here though. I moved the connector and I didn't set it up on this exit. So what do we do with this one? I think what we'll do with this one then is exactly the same as what we've just done with that one. By that, we're going to do this. Alright, so... Quite a cool mechanic, like funnels in Portal, but one can choose where to put them. Only difference is that the, the, the device of the game has only a few ways of funneling, even though it could be both sides. Yeah. But then I guess it kind of makes sense with the direction, the way it works, because those panels attract you to I've them. I've known Byron since day one. I was the first to be born with upgrades from the original Soma design, and he was the first to volunteer to upgrade his existing body. Yeah, he was a big supporter of upgrades. Deliberate evolution, he called it. Athena and Cornelius were very kind to me, and so was Byron, but he also made fun of me. And oddly enough, that made me feel more like an equal than anything the others said. Okay, I'm getting distracted, but there is good reason to be distracted right now. We have of late been told much about what the citizen owes the city. Loyalty, obedience, gratitude. And I will not argue with those who say that without some loyalty to a greater good, a man is little more than a savage. And I will even say that these days there are more savages amongst us than amongst the barbarians, who we call savages out of ignorance and arrogance. But there is another question that we are rarely encouraged to ask. What does the city owe the citizen? What must it offer to earn loyalty, obedience and gratitude? And if, as we have said, a city is a kind of machine, should a machine that does not fulfill its purpose perhaps be repaired or replaced? I'm not sure because is that like saying a human that doesn't fit their purpose or do what they should be doing, should they be replaced? I mean, I guess it works like that in, in terms of employment and jobs, but you're talking about, like, a whole issue, morality kind of issue about, okay, so you're not doing what you do, you're not on this, you're not doing what you was put on this planet to do, I'm going to get rid of you. I mean, sure, a machine's not got a conscience or anything, but, well, a rudimentary machine has not got a conscience, but, I don't know. one of those thought-provoking questions, passages, of which this game has many. I know I'm getting massively distracted here. Just trying to see if there's a way over here to get up on this ridge. That's why I, I happened to stumble across that um, anti grav panel over there. I was looking to see if there was a way onto the ridge. Washing machine. 
Ancient cranial devices and tracers excreted various substances through their pores, small openings in their skin. The garments would quickly become a breeding ground for bacteria. Because of this, they had to find efficient ways of cleaning their textiles, a task that otherwise became a significant chore for parts of the population. Those are... Uh, interesting. Just be structures in the water, of course, but... So that's all they are. I don't think there's any way we can get on top of them. And uh, luckily, we got a voice audio log, so that saves my voice. On my last return to New Jerusalem, I perused the latest artistic offerings and found myself deeply disappointed. There is nothing more despicable to me than an artist who pursues the appearance of morality. Moral art is trash, garbage, not even good enough to be used as wallpaper. If art is a religion, then morality is for those who want to be seen in church. True art is for those who believe. Art must be ecstatic, a work of revelation, created in pursuit of the truth, no matter where it leads. An artist must be an agent of chaos in times of order. End an agent of order in times of chaos. Today, for the first time, I synthesized life. It was just a unicellular cyanobacterium, but the sheer complexity of even such a simple organism is breathtaking. Creating it from pure energy, I was filled with a sense of awe and majesty a, a sense that what i was doing was sacred it made me think about the enormous power of life two and a half billion years ago these simple beings terraformed the entire planet creating the oxygen that underlies the earth's incredible biodiversity I'm sprinting wiping out thousands of other species but making the future possible so they have recreate, like I said, they before. I think it sounds like they are recreating organic life. Or I can get up there. Hey, Alcatraz. What can I do for you, 1K? He blamed Byron for being headstrong and foolish, which I don't see it quite the same way, but it's easy to understand why the mayor would think that. It wasn't hard to convince him that we can't leave Byron behind, though. You may not agree with Herman on a lot of issues, 1K, but he's not a bad person. He's doing his best in a difficult situation. I hope so. He's always been annoyingly hard to get rid of. If he's been annoyingly hard to get rid of, then why do you hope that he's okay? <laughs> he was the third to be born, after Athena and Eustathius. He was an important figure in New Jerusalem's early history, almost as important as Athena. But after she vanished, he faded into the background. I don't think anyone suspected he knew where she was. I didn't know him that well, but he was always very calm, very thoughtful. Everyone respected him. Interesting question, LB, that you asked me at the beginning of the stream. I do, although I prefer the term interactive fiction. It's better at capturing what this art form really is, storytelling, but with a completely different underlying structure. As a category, it's more equivalent to poetry or the novel rather than, say, film.
Anything else? He was in charge of planning New Alexandria. It was his mistake that led to the disaster. After that, he retired from public affairs and dedicated himself to his studies. Well, they've experienced a lot more hardship and tragedy than most of us. I think it's understandable that they choose to focus on their personal interests. Why do you ask? Just because I believe we don't need to expand and dominate everything doesn't mean I want us to go extinct. I know there are people who think that way, but if I care about other species going extinct, why wouldn't I care about this one? Seems irrational to me. You mean, am I unduly influenced by my experiences? Unable to imagine the better future Byron wanted because I'm too traumatized? Could be. But I'd like to think I'm a little more self-aware than that. It makes me wonder why people always think they know better than nature. Oh, he's not so, um... It's not so, um interested it seems in Miranda's efforts to bring things back. Lateral thinking. Okay. I have a rough idea of what we need to do here. Big question is Goodness and local biosphere. Uh, this environment has been modified to allow life to spread. Most of the life forms here, life forms can be found in other parts of the island as well, but some appear to be endemic to this region. 
It's possible they were genetically modified to be better to better be better able to survive here. There are some particularly gen gorgeous dragonflies that I cannot help but think were deliberately designed to be beautiful. But maybe I'm making the same mistake our ancestors made, seeing intent where there is none. Some reason I got a massive um, feeling of that I was falling myself there. Um, rather bizarre. There are the golden gates. That is telling me that this is over in this direction somewhere. I kind of feel like the blue glow is a little bit of an indicator as to um, where it is in which direction. Now, I tried to play a... Um, I've probably told this story before. I tried to play a game on the VR once, which was like a... Sim it was an international space station simulator. It wasn't really a game, but it was like an experience. And yeah, I I was I felt terrible. It was not a good experience. Were you asking about before the VR questions? Something about directions? Um, the Prometheus, uh, well, the, the star, um, can't see it from here, but the, there's, on the, the ones where you have to find the, like, shard and it follows you around, um, I feel like it kind of, I feel like it kind of points, like, at the thing at the top where it kind of, like, goes into, it almost, like, I feel like it points to a rough direction to where... I'm gonna find the initial shard, but I mean, I'm. That's just uh, a thought. Oh, I like the looks of this one. Given that it's called recycling, that would be pretty cool. side. Oh, I need the cube. Oh, no. I need the cube. So, we need to recycle the cube. Oh, I should have maybe gone across there with the... Yeah, okay. So, let's get the cube. Also known as Hexhaven. Without that, we can't take this um, connector across. Hmm. Actually, yeah, we can just do this, right?
I do like that element. To be fair. It's growing on me. It makes for some very portalesque puzzles. Uh, digging through the archives, I was surprised to discover that there is a movie based on the Talos Principle. An international co-production written by Harris, Robert Harrison Blake, pseudonym for an unknown screenwriter, and directed by a young Sergio Leone. It stars Peter Ustinov as Stratton of Stagiria, Zero Mostel of his comedy sidekick Nicomatius, and Angel Arda and Aranda as the Ernest Amintus. It's not a realistic biography of Stratton, but a kind of sword and sandal fantasy epic that accumulates in Stratton building a replica of the mythological robot Talos to defeat the war-crazed Spartans. This part is fun and surprisingly well done for its tiny budget, but the movie also contains a number of fascinating dialogue scenes inspired by Stratton's work. Eustinoff as Stratton has a line I really liked. There are always hard times in human history. Amintus, do you think... We are the first to be besieged by enemies or to doubt the wisdom of our allies. But while yesterday is set in stone, a better tomorrow is always in our grasp. That's fascinating. Thank you for sharing. How weird that the film is not better known. It's what Trevor said in his audio, in that audio 1K I found. Great art isn't always appreciated in its own time. It's not like people particularly love Stratton himself, but we can appreciate it now. Interestingly, I wonder then if... I, I guess you don't get this if you haven't picked up that um, audio quote from Trevor, which is quite interesting. Well, interesting. Good. How it was before. My great grandmother lived to be 108 years old, retaining her sharpness of mind till the last day. A couple of months before she died, I interviewed her for my podcast. At the end, I asked the same question I asked every guest What is something you wish you everyone understood? She thought about it for a while, then she said, How it was before. She tried to explain how much time she spent every single day on utterly mind numbing activities, like hauling water from the well how radically everything changed when their area was finally connected to the electrical grid. Before, there was no time to live, she said. No time to be free, only work, work, work. I countered by saying that there didn't seem to be much time to live now either, but she laughed diverse... Derisive... Derisively? I had no idea what work really meant, she said. She said, young people were weak and feckless and that's why we let corporations exploit us. Slightly unnerved by her harshness, I asked her if she missed anything about that time. Old photos. Our village seemed quite idyllic to me. My grandmother quashed any romantic notions I might have had. Past is bad, she said with some finality. Let it be. So many thousand generations of suttering, even a, sing even a single line of full of tragedy seems outrageous and acceptable to me. That's why we have to make it make it have meaning. The book annotated internet comments by Eustathius too. I think people are dumb, like relentlessly beeping stupid. Absolute beeping morons. Human history is a beeping clown show from beginning to end. The average person, just a slobbering buffoon, bumbling through life like a drunk gorilla in a beeping giant shop breaking stuff left, right, and throwing beep at the walls and never understanding a single beeping thing that happens. I mean, just look at this beeping software putting asterisks where the swear words would be. People are afraid of beeping words like they have magical powers, but the real world beep that is beeping running their lives, that's fine because they're too beeping dumb to understand about it. You turn to monk, brother, we never beeping left. Curious intervention. The return of the mythical state of monkey is usually portrayed as a material return to earlier stages of development, but here the author instead portrays it as a mental state that has never been surmounted. 
would like to meet Uncle Eustaphius one day. He sounded, sounds like someone who is always curious about everything. Fail to load profile. From Hepatica's Journal 1, founding a new Jerusalem, day 421. The first new human arrived today. He calls himself Arkaday, after Shinevsky's after Shivanevsky. Spirits are still dampened by the loss of Yemo, Yemo, but everyone is making an effort. I feel a little sorry for him. He's so still so curious, jumping at shadows and staring up at the sky all night, just like I used to do. And here we are, a bunch of grouchy old humans that have seen it all and are weary and tired and sad. I wonder what he makes of it all. But be that as it may, we're making good progress on the new living area. Although Arkaday will have to use Yemo's old quarters for the next few weeks. But at least he got to um, look up at the look up at the sky and take it all in. I mean, I was literally like, I was born and it was like, come on, we're off on an adventure. Been diddle daddle. So, yeah. There's probably got some coming around there. Bitch on the other side. It's stupid. Yep, that's what I was thinking. That's just what I was thinking. I kind of forgot from for a second that when you put the elements into um, the funnel, they keep locked on to what their targets, so kind of makes perfect sense, but interesting though like yeah like taking the driller through its own hole normally you can't have it activated unless it's on a solid surface so yeah very interesting twist there and um i like that interaction between the elements yeah time first. I think that would have been more impressive though if um uh, yeah, the box over here. That would have been more impressive if I could have taken the um the anti the anti-grab thing through there with me.
I guess I could just bring it back to... No, because it needs to be straight. Ah. Because of the fencing, it has to be like square onto it or else it won't fit. Interesting. I don't think there's any more anti-grab panels either that we can use here. There is just that one. I don't really see anything else that we... Ooh, hold on. Hold on. I wonder if... Okay, we need to get the fan up there. Now, I would say then, what we'll do is we'll go back through the side, pick up the hexahedron, put the hexahedron uh, up here. No, oh, I think we can maybe just jump into the Really? There we go. Let's say, surely I can jump into that. Alright guys, remember that that is by Puzzle 6. Oh, by the last puzzle. Uh, I will take it now. Way to catch the player out. There's a sharp right or a sharp left and goes completely the opposite direction. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, we're going back this way. Not even this one though, is it? That's the thing. Going the real long way around. Oh, 
Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's um, it's a good thing that they kind of potentially put in here. Oh, I can't get over the bridge. Great. For anybody who isn't potentially observant, trying to make them aware of different bits and pieces. Where's your gun? Nearly. What's up? with such intensity that your heart suffers. Keep your eyes on that distant vision even when you know that you may never reach it. Very interesting stuff. 